Okay, so stable isotopes. So what was J.J. Thompson, what did he really discover? Well, what he was describing and discovering is his work, in his work was that you actually do have different forms of the same isotope, and those are referred to as stable isotopes. So what we have is a variation in mass. Now, what that means is that the reactivity, overall reactivity is the same, the hydrogen is hydrogen, but what it does mean is that it's one has a heavier mass than the other, and what that can do is it can make weaker and stronger bonds. Now, what fractionation does and, and what fractionation represents, it's the, just the differentiation of these isotopes between two phases. We have kinetic fractionation that describes unidirectional reactions. Then equilibrium fractionation, which would be a glass of water again, but capped. And what you'll find is that the water ions will actually balance between the liquid and gaseous phase and it will, it will equilibrate with the, the two substances. Um, and then what we're finding here is that, you know, the bond strength and therefore the uh, rate of reaction is faster for the protium for the uh, proton all by itself. And it's slower for the deuterium, the proton and the neutron together. And that's because the bond strength is stronger in the heavier isotope. Now, um, when we talk about heavy uh, and, and light isotopes, we use terms depleted and enriched. So depleted just suggests that it's less than the standard or another value, and enriched refers to it being greater than the standard or relative to another value. What we would expect is the liquid phase to have more of the deuterium of the two H's because they're reacting less to the space change, and then we would expect our vapor to be much more depleted or uh, have many more uh, one H's or proteums present.